Welcome back to my channel. It's Wee Peeler here. Today I'm going to be talking about how to record your video gaming in HD. In the past I've put up video tutorials on how to capture standard definition gaming with both the Dazzle capture card and the Hava HD wireless. Today I will be talking about an HD PVR which is a personal video recorder. It will let you put 720p HD video directly from your video gaming console onto your computer for video editing. I'm going to do my best here to show you guys how to set everything up pretty smoothly. I'm also going to show you guys how to get the best video quality onto YouTube. That's usually a high priority with this stuff. Uh, I can get pretty good quality onto YouTube. It's just YouTube has crappy codecs, so you can only do so much. Uh, one thing I ask of you guys, just please watch the whole video before you have any questions or comment. Uh, I'm going to do a pretty good explanation here, and I'm probably going to get 15 messages from Newbie69 asking something brilliant, like, does it plug into the wall? How do you set it up? Dude, just watch the whole video, and you'll get it. The personal video recorder that I use is from Hophog. I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce it, but I'm assuming it's Hophog. I guess you could say Hophog, or if you're pretty sporty, Hophoggy. Um, HD PVR records 720p high definition TV or video gaming to your PC. Uses the component wires so you get true 720p HD video. I initially got mine through Amazon.com. I would not recommend that as they were selling old models. Um, it did not work for me. I had to return it through Hop Hog Company, which is located in New York, USA. Uh, they were kind enough to ship me a brand new updated model at no extra charge. Uh, but to not have to go through the hassle, I would say forget getting it through Amazon or any other cheap site. Uh, make sure you get it directly through these guys. Uh, they have the most recent updated models. The device comes with everything you see in this video. The box is in the upper left corner. The Hot Pog unit is actually right smack in the middle here. Uh, it's a pretty cool looking device. It doesn't look too bad under the TV or under your consoles. Um, it's got a little power button right here just to turn it on and off. The back has got your outs and your ins for both audio and component. So you got your three video uh, component inputs here, two audio inputs here, and then your out for audio up top, three component video outs. It's also got optical in and optical out in case you want to record 5.1 surround sound. That's for you guys with uh, good systems. It's also got a blaster cable insert which lets you use a remote and USB out and power plug out. As for everything it comes with, you've got your IR blaster cable, that's so you can use the remote with it. I took the CD out of the package but it comes with an install CD. I highly recommend getting the update from Hop Hog as soon as you get this thing. Um, I installed from the disc and right away I was told to update so I would go right to their website and just use their install exe versus the CD. Obviously it comes with a power cable so you can plug the thing in and turn it on. It's got a USB 2.0 uh, firewire so that you can get the HD video onto your computer smoothly. Uh, and it's got the component wire. It comes with a pretty decent one. It's a pretty good length. Um, the only thing you'll need on top of that is the component cables from either your PS3 or your Xbox 360. I use the 360 so my component wires are laying over there. Um, there's my Xbox and my setup with my HDTV. Plant is optional. Setting this thing up isn't exactly rocket science, but I'll show you anyway. Uh, what you'll want to do is take your component wires from either your PS3 or your Xbox 360 and run them into the ins along the bottom. Uh, if you use standard audio, I would say use the standard audio inputs here, your video components inputs here. Then you want to take your double-ended component and plug it into the out. So you got your PS3, Xbox wires going into the in and then that double component cable going from the out to your TV. So you got Xbox video running to this machine and this machine running to the TV. That's going to give you the HD video. USB cord over here plugs into the spot here and it runs right to your PC. Uh, the only issue with that is that it's kind of short so that you need to have your TV and your Xbox or PS3 near your computer 
Another option for that would be to get a long USB extender. Uh, they're not real cheap, but if you're going to spend 200 bucks on this thing, another 30 bucks isn't exactly a, a break in the bank. So um, check that out if you need a longer cable. My setup after everything is plugged in is Hot Pog down in the corner, Xbox pretty much right next to it. Everything's plugged right into the HDTV. Here's my setup when I want to record my gaming. Got the Hot Pog pulled out a little bit so that I can get it over to my PC. Uh, USB plugs in nice and easy. Turn the unit on, turn your TV on, turn your Xbox or PS3 on, and you'll see it on both the TV and your computer. And there it is. Got my Xbox screen right on my PC. If you can check that out, you can flip through. Pretty easy. Does the same thing over here. 720 HD video. Now, up in the corner here, it's got default settings already set. Um, I would stick with the defaults. Under format, if I play a pretty fast paced game like FIFA, any sports games, I do turn the average um, MBPS, which is how good the quality is, I bump it up to 10. Uh, I think normally on default it's like 8. So I bump that up to 10. I keep it on constant um, bit rate just to keep things going easily. Click OK. It refreshes the software. Bam, you got your video on there. Um, you can record pretty much any size file you want. I haven't gone much bigger than about 15 or 20 minutes just because the file sizes are huge. It records in M2TS files. There are not many programs out there that work with M2TS. Uh, I do know Studio 12 and Sony Vegas Pro 8.0C, I believe, is the newest version, and that will recognize the M2TS files. I use Sony Vegas Pro 8.0C. It recognizes the M2TS files from the Hopog, uh, and they're pretty easy to work with. So I'll take a video just to show you, import it into Vegas. You'll get the preview box up here, and in order to get this to run smoothly, we want to match all the video properties. So up here, there's a Project Video Properties button. You want to click that. Here are all the settings for your current video you're looking at. What you want to do is go to Match Media Settings, which is this little folder up here. Click that, find the video that you imported into Vegas, and open that up. It matches all the settings so that it plays back clearly, and you get the best video quality that you can get. Click Apply, click OK, and you're ready to edit. Once you've edited your video and you want to render, go up to File, Render As. I still believe that WMV gives you the best quality, but that's only for playback on your computer. Uh, if you want to have good quality on YouTube, I would suggest using MP4. That's what I use to render all my videos for YouTube. Uh, it's a, called the Main Concept AVC slash AAC. It's under the .MP4 in the drop-down box. Click that. Go to Custom. Obviously, you want your video rendering quality to be best, so I would drop that down. Click Best go to the video tab. Under here there's an automatic setting for 320 by 240, 640 by 480. Go to custom frame size. I already changed this because HD video is 1280 by 720 so you want to put 1280 in the width box, 720 in the height box. Under profile I leave it at main. Frame rate you may have to change. Uh, normally it's on regular NTSC uh, which is 29.7 or so frames per second, change it to 59.940000. This is closest to the 60 frames per second that Hop Hog puts out. It'll make the video very smooth, very clear, um, very low motion blur. It'll look good on YouTube. Field order I left at none. Pixel aspect ratio I left at one. I did change the number of reference frames thanks to ClearCut83. Uh, we talked a few times about rendering video and he told me the settings for this. However, I did have to change this constant bitrate. I told you guys before that I changed the default Hopog settings from 8 Mbps to 10 Mbps. You want to match this. So if you record it on 8, make sure you put 8 in this. I recorded on 10, so I changed this to 10. When you're done changing that and matching the setting, click OK. Name your file, whatever you want to name it. 
click save. You can email me questions, they go right to my BlackBerry so I can respond pretty fast. I'll be waiting to be 69.